In today's project, I will be working on some sculpting. It's something I haven't done in a really long time, and I was trying to figure out how I could bring my skills back into shape with sculpting with a little bit of a twist. Now, I have other hobbies besides creating art. Um, well, in a way, it's kind of a bit of an art form. I work on bonsai. So when I say I have a bonsai hobby, it's more of a bonsai problem. I will be showing you some of the stuff I have that I need to be working on. Some of these were made from cuttings from bigger branches like this one, so it already has a nice thick trunk. And it keeps going. My first step is to create a front view and top view sketch of my idea. Now my concept is a castle ruin that's been taken over by a forest. This is where the plants come in. I go in and get a rough sketch. I'm going to have a doorway that's been busted down or something and a tower in the back with a tree going from the top of the tower and um, I get everything kind of sketched out so I can literally use it as a template for my sculpting. Moving on to the framework that's going to go under the clay. This is going to be what's going to keep all the pieces standing up because we don't want them falling down. You want it for it to look like part of it's fell down but not all of it. So I use some wire to basically trace the shape of all the areas that I plan to sculpt for the ruins. I I make sure I use enough wire so that it can stand up on its own because it's going to be holding up the clay. I follow the same steps with all the different sections. There's going to be a small wall next to the door with some windows or something going on there. And then on the back there's going to be a big staircase leading up to a tower. For the tower framework, it's going to be a little, little bit tricky. Um, I make two pieces following the same shape and then I add some wire mesh to kind of fill in all the flat areas that are going to be holding clay. Alright, so I finished all the armature pieces that I created for what's going to be the ruins inside the pot. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of position them in the pot, see what they look like, see if I need to make any alterations before I start putting the clay on them. Everything fits pretty good. I just gotta make one or two adjustments to make sure that the shapes are correct. And now I'm ready for clay. So I have an idea. I don't want for the clay to be a flat color. So I'm using Sculpey Original and Sculpey Firm and I'm mixing it together, creating a small piece of something just to make sure that this is going to work and it's not going to not work. <laughs> I don't want to sculpt everything and then it falls apart. So that worked okay. Everything held together after I baked it. So we're moving on to the main sculpture. I'm grabbing chunks of clay and attaching it to the framework. After I do that, I use a rubber tool to smooth all the chunks of clay into one smooth clay piece. Using a wedge tool, I start doing indentations for all the frames and, and rocks and bricks and columns that are dilapidated. To get more texture to it, to give it a niche look, I use some brushes and a toothbrush and I beat the crap out of it to get just a lot of nasty texture to it. I do the same process with the doorway piece just chunks of clay after I get the basic shape that I want I smooth it out I add the walls on the sides and after I get far enough with the shape it's time for detail with some metal tools I get all the bricks and columns and pieces all carved out and I find a wire brush that's a lot better and a lot faster to create that rock texture. So I use that from now on. 
and I got interrupted so you're about to get a little doggy intermission in the middle of my video. Oh boy, so for this one I was a little scared because I had no game plan. I just went in trying to figure out what I was going to work. I ended up just rolling out some pieces of clay and just applying that on top of the mesh and then finding out ways where the clays could meet together and where I could try to blend the seams together. And it came out pretty okay. Now I do this throughout the whole piece. I wanted to create a sort of illusion when I went into doing all the brick details. Now this is going to technically be the back piece of the ruins and I went a little softer with the way I carved all the details because I wanted for it to look like it was further into the distance. I'm hoping that once everything is put together it's going to have that effect that it's just further away. So I messed up. I was using this wax paper to roll out the the sculpt piece so it wouldn't stick to the table. And I figured, hey, you know what? I'll just set the stuff on it and just cook it that way, which I've never done before. And it turns out that the larger parts that were touching the wax paper burnt on this piece, which is not a big deal. It'll be okay. Now I'm pretty pleased with the color differences between the pieces that were created by using the two different types of sculptures but it is looking a little flat I do want to add a little bit of aging and a little bit of um, texture to it so I went ahead and I bought the cheapest outdoor paint I could find it's just simply called outdoor colors by Delta Creative this was like five dollars so I won't be using a lot of paint I have different colors to pick. I'm probably going to stick with just some of the darker tones, maybe a little bit of moss or, or just grime through the areas. Again, I still want to stick with most of the pieces not being completely covered by paint, just because I want to make sure that it can withstand the environment and it will not affect the plants negatively. So. I'm probably going to do a couple of washes to get the crevices darker, maybe a couple of greens here and there. Um, so that would be the last step before we put it all together with the plants. So this is what step four. Step four. We did the sketch, the armature. We sculpted. Now, we do, now we're going to do some painting and then the last part will be just putting it all together. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now to get everything ready to paint, I clean all the surfaces and I get my old paintbrush so the bristles don't get messed up. And I get some paint, I apply it to a small section of one of the ruins. And then I grab a towel and I wipe away most of the paint. This creates a wash, meaning that all the crevices are still full of paint, but the top surfaces are not. And it's, you're going to see what the result is. I'm going to flip the ruins over and you see the original. And then I flip it back and you see what it looks like now. So it really just makes all the, all the details stand out. I keep doing this to the other pieces of the ruins as well, making sure that I do small sections and I change the colors up a little bit here and there so that it looks a little bit more grimy and aged differently and some greens here and there to make it look like maybe moss is growing on the rocks. So for the tower part, I um, try to go a little bit softer with, with the tone so it's not as dark trying to create that effect that is more in the distance. I do go back to all the pieces and add some darker tones to areas that I feel would have collected more grime and stuff. So I'm really excited how these came out after the paint. I have to say that the paint came out 
um, a lot better than I thought it would, especially since I was using some pretty cheap paints that I haven't used before. But I'm pretty excited just as a um, reference point. This is the first piece that I made, trying to see if I was able to combine both clays and still keep a solid piece after it was baked. Um, so it's quite a difference. This looks pretty brand new not finished while this has a very well aged and weathered look or last step it's going to figure out what's going to go in the pot because although this looks pretty cool having the ruins in the bonsai pot with no bonsai trees in it is not what we're here for what goes in the pot is not going to be solely up to me it's going to be more about the health of the plant and what plants are able to function very well in this composition. Now, I'm going to start going through all the cuttings I showed you earlier in the video, eliminating the ones that I feel don't work because of health condition, size, um, plant species, and then I'm going to start taking a closer look at what could really give us the results we're looking for. Now it's time to get a little bit messy. I'm using some gravel, some bonsai dirt, and some regular dirt and sand. And I'm kind of just mixing it all together to create the dirt that is going to be at the bottom of our ruins and where the plants are going to grow. Then I place the ruins and I move on to trying to find the plants that will work. As I'm going through it, I find a worm. It's alive. I took it outside. My idea for the ruins, um, especially the tower and the door, was to have roots kind of growing in front of it with a tree on the top. So that's the effect I'm kind of going for. I did find a plant that had some gnarly curvy roots that I was able to push through one of the window holes of the small part of the ruins. And I, I really love the way that came out. I try to implement certain looks to it like all the plants are going through the ruins and they're breaking apart because the plants are taking over. I think I did a pretty good job with that. So I put that back down. Now I want to leave some mystery to the viewer so I'm going to fade into black and then show you the finished result. So here is the finished project and I have to say I'm extremely extremely happy with the way everything came out. I am going to let it go in a circle for a second.
As the last couple of details, I went around and I gathered some moss that I placed around most of the base to kind of mimic some grass and some smaller plants to have the look of a couple of bushes. I am very, 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 very pleased how everything came out. We got the roots over the doorway, how we imagine, and some in front of the tower right here. And the tower looks like it's caving in, how I pushed it down a little bit to make it look like it's in distress from the weight of the tree. So now it is time to focus in the future on developing all the plants that I've added throughout. Most of them are quite small, which is what I wanted. I want to give them a chance to grow into the pot and fit themselves throughout the project and align some of the roots to get bigger and have it fit a lot better. Make it, make it not just seem like the plants age within the ruins, but actually have the plants grow and develop within the ruins. So this project was mainly the focus of the sculpture the base and getting the plants into place in the upcoming years the rest of the work will be based on the living parts of the project so although this is the end of this video it is just the beginning for this project and i'm looking forward to see how it will develop in the future i'm outside i hope this shows up okay because it's a little dark i'm going to grab some spanish moss and cover some of the roots until they get used to um, not being in the dirt. It's pretty dark right now uh, But there it is. I put it in a place that's going to be mainly shaded. Ooh mm -hmm. oh. Oh. All right, I don't know what that was, but something tried to eat me uh, So it's right there in the shade and it will also get a lot of water Right where it's at and within the next couple of weeks we can go ahead and remove the Spanish moss and move it to one of the benches where it will be nicely displayed um, but that's it thanks for watching my video make sure to like it leave a comment below and for more art related videos go to my channel and subscribe